What's up? Welcome to Radio Badland. And part of this whole nostalgia trip is to get the fabulous musicians in the bands who played at last year's Badland to come in and to give us a bit of a feel before we head into announcements for edition 2024. And uh, the F-16s blew the roof off, as they often do at festivals around the planet. Josh from the F-16s joins me. What's up, Josh? How's it? How's the weather doing in Chennai? Hey, man. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Weather is rainy, gloomy, but uh, uh, I, I, we welcome the shade here. You know, Bandland last year was so phenomenal. For me, it was really like coming back home to, to Deep Purple, discovering Emil and the Sniffers, a punk rock band that I hadn't heard too much of. Yeah. Getting more into a war on drugs. Talk to me yeah. first about the F-16's performance. I mean, you're in Australia. You guys have been performing there for decades now. Yeah. Uh, what was special about Badland? Man, um, I think a lot of music right now is popping with uh, the notion of nostalgia. And Badland's really tapped into that heart with Warren Drugs, Deep Purple, you know, the Goo Goo Dolls. And I think the most beautiful thing was that it was a, it was a festival purely, purely founded on rock and roll. Which is so rare right now in the world, you know. I mean, sure, it's there in the U.S., but we don't have a rock festival in India. I think this is the first uh, one that's happening now because usually it's a rapper or it's like a pop crew or... You know what I mean? There wasn't a single rapper in sight. There wasn't a single pop artist in sight. It was just guitars, live music, and, uh, and a whole lot of people who were on the same wavelength. I think that was super rare. I really love that festival. <laughs> well, you know what, guys, I'm not going to push him for any dates or anything like that. But just some off the mic conversation with Josh when I, he was logging in. They seem to be working on new material for an album. And that is a big treat, man. I mean, the EPs have been coming along nicely. And we've been loving the singles. There's one practically every year. Yeah. But that full-fledged album in the mold of Trigger Punk and Kaleidoscope, is something I'm, I'm sure the fans are constantly asking for. Yeah, I think it's something we've also been talking for. It's been a very long time since we put out a big body of work. So I think uh, this this year we really put our heads down. Um, we we went off to Uti with all our gear for a month, wrote a bunch of tracks over there, came back, wrote a bunch of tracks here, and now we're uh, now we're neck deep into the album right now. Yeah. But the album has been named, the cover's been shot, half the tracks have been mixed. It's happening, yeah. Beauty. And is it going to be House Arrest, your record label? No, we oh, you, you moved. Our, 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 our contract with them is over, so we're back to being good old indie. For now. Ah, for now. And for now. you know, sometimes I'm now getting the feeling that bands are a lot happier using that terminology. We're back yeah. to being indie. The true, the true essence of that word, independent indie. Yeah. Nobody supports you. Spend your own money for your own shit. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come to some recent material. I mean, it sucks to be human is, to be quintessential F16s because, you know, at the, at the face level, the lyrics sound morose, but the music is happy. <laughs> and that's, yeah. That's the beautiful contradiction we've come to expect from you guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tell me about the writing of Sucks to Be Human. What were you going through at that particular phase, man? I was peak COVID and all this. Ah, was, uh, so even though you released it in 22, yeah. when you wrote it, you were in the midst, midst of COVID, yeah? Yeah, it was peak COVID. It was super locked down. And uh, we were like, since we're locked in, why don't we just meet up at my place? And uh, we brought all our gear there, recorded the album. We wrote it out, and I think everybody's really frustrated at that point. So I think it was "Sucks to Be Human" was a apt title, you know, just be like, I wish I was a bird. So yeah, birds flying around free in COVID, or even a rock, but uh, or pebble. But uh, yeah, it was peak lockdown. We were locked in. We were very aggro, uh, very, very, very irritated. Everybody was itchy. You can't get out, you know. So yeah, "Sucks to Be Human." That entire record was in the house. Josh, when you start doing videos and the kind of wacky videos that you guys do, is there any opposition in the ranks? Let me explain. I mean, when, when you're doing I'm on holiday and all four of you chaps have to put on a just a, a, 
a chef's apron. Yeah. <laughs> Is there one of you that goes, I'm not wearing this shit. Always. <laughs> always. Always. There's always opposition. That's the beauty of playing in a band. <laughs> Somebody has to, you need to have that friction of ideas. Otherwise, yeah. nothing really grows. So... Somebody is always, uh, oh, I don't want to wear the apron. I'm too hot for this. I'm like, oh, just, just wear it. It's good. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, even even stuff like with Easy Bake, Easy Wake, yeah. all of you wearing bright yellow, like Tamil, uh, kitschy, Tamil mainstream stars. We got that stitched and made ourselves, yeah. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> mm. Would there yeah. still be opposition to stuff like that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, some people just, uh, everybody in the band is so different. So, you know, some one person doesn't really like to run, the other one loves to, to go on marathons, you know. So, uh, I think that's also the beauty of playing in a band. Just somebody always disagreeing with you and somebody always agreeing with you. And, and really, almost like an extension to the videos is the artwork. I mean, when one looks at, is it time to eat the rich yet? With your heads all served on a tabletop. Yeah. Or such to be human, having, you know, your eye, eye sockets all pulled out with some crazy light in your eyes. Who thinks of stuff like that, man? We all do. So, I think for Sucks to be Human, we sat down with the director, Lenric Kumar. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would fly down and he would stay in our house for a good 10 days. And all of us sit down and brainstorm the idea and come to a place where everybody was agreeable. Um, but yeah, I mean, we try and make our art as... Uh, incorporated of with shock value as possible because you see everything anyways otherwise you need when if people want to consume art it needs to you need to be shaken to your bone a bit you need to see four dudes in one in golden onesies running in a forest you know what I mean you don't really see that stuff but yeah I guess uh, we all we all agree on shock value so it just it just depends on what we want to shock go with I'm sure there are lakhs and lakhs of F-16 fans who cut around and say Moonchild is my favorite song. Yeah, it, uh, uh, you know, Weekend Friends is my favorite EP. I'm, just, I'm talking about myself. Those are my favorites. In terms of EPs, what's the one that people go and say, "Whoa, this blew my mind." Mm. The greatest response you've got for an EP. An EP, I think, would be Weekend Friends. Weekend Friends really. Uh, I'm so happy you're saying that, man. I mean, it's just yeah. something about that. I mean, it's on. It's constantly on my playlist. And, you know, I can never tire of listening to it. It's just one of those things. Mm. It's the EP. It's the EP that got us uh, a record label also in the US. So that EP is kind of dear to us. Yeah. What is it that you think was distinctly different in Weekend Friends? We just shifted the tide for you. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know what. Like, it's hard to really pinpoint what was different from each of our songs. I all I know is that there is a constant evolution in how we create. You know, it's hard to put my finger on and say, yeah, this is what has changed. But I just know that, you know, even though we've been a band for a decade, you obviously change, not just as a person, but even what art you consume or what art you create. Mm. So it's an automatic process. And uh, it's hard to pinpoint or put a word to it, like, yeah, this changed and this time. But it was just, it's nice to, it's nice to even sit back and notice sometimes when I, when I see each of my band members and myself. It's nice to see how everyone's evolved in a certain way. From the first EP all the way to what music we're working on now, it's a huge shift and it's... Yeah. 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 I, I get... Is the new album... I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't... I'm aching to hear it. Is it... Is there going to be more ambient pop on it? Or are you going back to the... Let's go back to basic rock more? Man, I'm dying to tell you the name of the, the, <laughs> of the album, but I will get in big trouble. But um, it's, uh, it's, it's a big body of work, I would say that much. I think it's almost like an, an hour of music. Yeah, it's like 15 tracks. Wow. Uh, I think we wrote 16 and we're going to pick yeah. like 12. So it's the first time we wrote more than we have. This is Hashu. We were in the studio mixing the album as we speak. Um, but uh, yeah, we wrote about 16 tracks and uh, I think we're boiling it down to 10. So at least an hour's worth of music. And probably even put out a vinyl for a change. Oh, lovely. Mm -hmm. That'll be a big one for fans, man. I'm going to come back to, to, to Bandland. I mean, for me, mm -hmm. as a Bombay Tamil, mm -hmm. it, it was big Tamil represent for me because there was Scrat the brand. Yeah. Those boys are, are so amazing, man. Shiram and the boys. 
and you guys <laughs> and you guys yeah. the two chennai bands on bandland so so talk to me i mean you did tell me about the other bands but when the f16 took the stage was there anything different that you you smelt in the air at bandland and secondly a discovery for you like for example i didn't know about amel and the sniffers i mean i sniffed them out at bandland anything that in, in december of last year that you said whoa i mean this is something i haven't heard i think for me it was almost like a spiritual experience man you know to play to a uh, thousand plus um, i'm not even thousand probably 10000 people you know like a sea of people who are just there for one particular genre you know it's pretty incredible feeling you know everybody is in the same abyss that you're in it's not like different pockets of people are coming together in one place you know who you're catering to you know and i think that feeling of being on stage knowing that everybody was knowing what everybody wanted to eat uh was was incredible i think that my my biggest takeaway from bandlands was uh the warm drugs i mean i i love them i've listened to all their records uh, but seeing them live the the production the sound it was it was just incredible like the finesse of a of a band with almost where there were like seven people on stage and having that sound perfected live it was so incredible to see and uh i do have a fun story though so no one was allowed to take pictures uh anyways can you like i get back to that <laughs> <laughs> no one was allowed to take pictures but you sneaked one in <laughs> yeah I said yeah yeah yeah. I really got a trouble. <laughs> That's wonderful. Listen, Josh, thank you. Really thank you for your time, man. I appreciate it. My pleasure, yeah. I know I know sometimes your train of thought breaks when you're you when you're working on an album but you agree. Yeah. Man, it's, it's all bad. it's all yeah. for rock and roll, man. It's all for rock and roll. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. Thanks, man. Uh so uh, well, let me tell you about the story though. Uh, ah, what? yeah, you're telling me. I no, thought you were uh, chicken out. <laughs> No, no one was allowed to um, you know, take pictures with the Deep Purple lead singer, right? You remember yeah. that? Because yeah. he was very, he was very picky and all that. Mm. Uh, but I found myself after the festival in uh, in some hotel after a hotel, and we were doing the after parties. And as I was leaving the hotel at 3 a.m., the whole Deep Purple gang was in the hotel lobby packing up to leave. And I and I and I saw him, and I was like, uh, I was I was I was obviously a little I was obviously very tipsy, and I went up. I was like, listen. Can I take a picture with you when you're super chill, you know? So I do have a picture with the uh, uh, with with Ian, and nobody else does. So I have I, I pride myself in that. And my Lovely. dad, I showed it to my dad, and now he loves me again. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that is fun. It, it, it's like what kids. It's like it's like what kids who are fans of the F-16s would feel if they took a picture with you. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Thanks Cheers. for having me, man. 94.3 Radio 1